Welcome to the Propac MD Defibrillation Module. The Propac MD can deliver defibrillation in a number of ways. In this module, we will highlight how to use the Propac MD in the AED mode. We will also review how to use the manual mode with an advisory CPR protocol setup and how to use the Propac MD to deliver emergency defibrillation. We will review these modes with the use of hands-free electrodes as well as use of paddles for defibrillation throughout this module. Always follow your local resuscitation protocols. The Quick Disconnect Multifunction Defibrillation Pacing Cable is used for monitoring as well as delivery of therapies such as defibrillation, cardioversion, and pacing. The connector on the multifunction cable allows for backward compatibility with all Zoll electrodes. First, let's review how to use the Propac MD in the AED mode. The unit may already be configured to begin in AED mode. In AED mode, the Propac MD automatically begins the analysis of the patient's ECG rhythm, displays an analyzing ECG message for five seconds, and announces and displays a stand clear message. Once the analysis is completed, the unit indicates whether or not a shock is advised. The default energy selections for adult patients are 120 joules, 150 joules, and 200 joules. The default energy selections for pediatric patients are 50 joules, 70 joules, and 85 joules. Pediatric defibrillator energy levels should be selected based on site-specific protocols. Energy levels can be configured on the Propac MD to meet local standards. Adjustments can be made in the supervisor control panel, which is password protected. When a non-shockable rhythm is detected, the unit displays a No Shock Advised message. Immediately begin chest compressions and continue other treatment per protocol. If the patient's rhythm is shockable, the unit displays the shock advised and press shock messages. The defibrillator automatically prompts the operator to shock the patient at the pre-configured energy level and the shock button illuminates. A continuous tone sounds for 20 or 50 seconds, depending on configuration followed by a higher pitch tone for 10 seconds. You must deliver the shock within this 30 or 60 second interval, depending on configuration, or the defibrillator will disarm itself. Press and hold the illuminated shock button on the front panel until energy is delivered to the patient. Observe the patient or ECG response to verify that the shock has been delivered. The delivered energy level and the shock number, 1, are displayed in the panel at the bottom of the screen. Immediately begin chest compressions and continue other treatment per protocol. If at any time you want to cancel the defibrillation, press the pause soft key. To switch from AED mode to the manual mode, press the manual mode quick access key on the front panel of the unit. Using the navigation keys, select the four digits in the manual mode passcode. Press Save when you are finished. Once you have entered your passcode, you will be able to enter manual mode. When changing from AED mode to manual mode, the current selected energy level is maintained. If the unit has not been configured to enter a passcode, the message Exit to Manual Mode is displayed. Use the navigation keys to select Yes to enter the manual mode of operation. Now we will review hands-free advisory CPR protocol defibrillation. Turn the Propac MD on. If the unit is in AED mode, press the manual mode quick access key on the front panel of the unit to enter the manual mode of operation. When the Propac MD unit is configured for advisory CPR protocol defibrillation, the unit guides you through a cardiac event by performing ECG analysis, 
prepping the device for a shock, if needed, and leading you through a CPR interval. This cycle is repeated as long as advisory CPR protocol is active and electrodes are attached to the patient. If you press the energy select up or down arrow keys or the charge button while in advisory CPR protocol mode, the unit transitions to manual mode only. The advisory CPR protocol function can be activated only when the unit is configured for analysis CPR protocol. The unit is on and in manual mode. Hands-free therapy electrodes are properly connected to the patient. Valid impedance is detected and pacer is off and the patient mode is not set to neonate. When a non-shockable rhythm is detected, the unit displays a no shock advised message. The unit then leads you through a CPR interval and then restarts ECG analysis automatically. The advisory CPR protocol mode repeats the analysis and CPR intervals as long as advisory CPR protocol is active. You can press the exit quick access key at any time to return to manual mode. If the patient's rhythm is shockable, the unit displays the shock advised and press shock messages. The defibrillator automatically prompts the operator to shock the patient at the pre-configured energy level and the shock button illuminates. A continuous tone sounds for 20 or 50 seconds, depending on configuration, followed by a higher pitch tone for 10 seconds. You must deliver the shock within this 30 or 60 second interval, depending on configuration, or the defibrillator will disarm itself. If at any time you want to cancel the defibrillation, press the Disarm Quick Access key. Press and hold the illuminated shock button on the front panel until energy is delivered to the patient. The delivered energy level is displayed at the bottom of the screen and the shock number 1 displays at the top of the screen and in the defib control panel at the bottom of the screen. The unit then leads you through a CPR interval and then restarts ECG analysis automatically. The advisory CPR protocol mode repeats the analysis and CPR intervals as long as advisory CPR protocol is active. You can press the exit quick access key at any time to return to manual mode. Now we will review emergency hands-free manual defibrillation. Turn the ProPAC MD on. If the unit is in AED mode, press the manual mode quick access key on the front panel of the unit to enter the manual mode of operation. Press the energy select arrows up or down to select the desired energy level. Press the charge button on the front panel. A charging message displays at the bottom of the screen and a distinctive charging tone sounds indicating that the unit is charging. The energy range bar graph on the right side of the display highlights the charge level until it reaches the selected energy. When the unit is fully charged, the tone changes to a continuous charge ready tone. The highlighted energy bar graph includes the selected energy and the shock button lights up. If at any time you want to cancel the defibrillation, press the disarm quick access key. Press and hold the shock button on the front panel until energy is delivered to the patient. The delivered energy level is displayed at the bottom of the screen and the shock number, 2, displays at the top of the screen and in the defib control panel at the bottom of the screen. Begin compressions immediately after you have delivered the shock. After two minutes of compressions, analyze the rhythm. Repeat this sequence until the end of the resuscitation event. Now we will focus on the use of the optional external and internal paddles with the ProPAC MD. Make certain to choose the proper paddles based on the size of the patient, adult, large, pediatric, small. External paddles are supplied with larger electrode surface for adults. 
For pediatric applications, the adult electrode surface is removed, leaving the paddles in the pediatric configuration. Ensure that the paddles are connected to the therapy cable and that the therapy cable is connected to the Propac MD unit. Press the energy select arrows up or down to select the desired energy level. These buttons are located either on the front of the unit or on the sternum paddle. The following are the default energy selections. Adult, 120 joules. Pediatric, 50 joules. Neonate, 50 joules. Defibrillator energy levels should be selected based on site-specific protocols. The selected energy level is displayed at the bottom of the display screen. Press the charge button on the apex handle or on the front panel. A charging message displays at the bottom of the screen and a distinctive charging tone sounds indicating that the unit is charging. The energy range bar graph on the right side of the display highlights the charge level until it reaches the selected energy. When the unit is fully charged, the tone changes to a continuous charge ready tone. The highlighted energy bar graph includes the selected energy and the charge indicator on the apex paddle lights up. Using your thumbs, simultaneously press and hold both shock buttons, one on each paddle, until energy is delivered to the patient. The front panel shock button is inactive when using external paddles. Pressing this button instead of the paddle shock buttons will produce an audible invalid operation tone. The delivered energy level is displayed at the bottom of the screen and the shock number displays at the top of the screen and in the defib control panel at the bottom of the screen. If at any time you want to cancel the defibrillation, press the Disarm Quick Access key. If the defibrillator is not discharged within 60 seconds after reaching the selected energy level, the unit automatically disarms itself. Zoll internal paddles are designed for use with the Zoll Propac MD defibrillator to defibrillate the heart during open chest procedures. Two types of autoclavable internal handles are available. Molded autoclavable internal handles with integrated electrodes. Autoclavable internal handles with removable internal defibrillation electrodes. When an internal handle set is connected to the Propac MD, it automatically limits defibrillator energy output to a maximum of 50 joules. For step by step procedures for open chest defibrillation, as well as important cleaning and sterilization information regarding the autoclavable electrodes, Refer to the Autoclavable Internal Handle and Electrode Operator's Guide. You have reached the end of the Propac MD Defibrillation Module. For details on other capabilities of the Propac MD, please review those separate modules.